My name is Dr. Rick Segill. I'm and action. Hey, uh, Jay, how did you This is Kirk to them. And action. Hey, everyone, it's Dr. Rick. And uh, Teresa had a question about metformin. And metformin is it's like a love-hate relationship with my patients who are dealing with prediabetes, insulin resistance, or diabetes. But if this is the first time you're finding me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the alert button wherever it is to find out when I do new videos. So metformin's other name in medicine, or at least at the pharmacy, is called glucophage. But metformin is an old medicine. It, uh, it wasn't, it was pulled out of, uh, or not approved in the United States because of lactic acidosis with an earlier form of it. But it has since then come back into the limelight, uh, been controlled with its use, and is really gangbusters, one of the most studied medicines for a couple of decades now. However, if you are um, uh, any of those diseases, or not diseases, but medical problems, or even if you're just overweight, if you're, uh, if you're overweight, if you're obese, if you have prediabetes, if you have insulin resistance, and your hemoglobin A1C hasn't turned positive yet, uh, if you're full-blown diabetes, even if you're type 1 diabetes, most of this is type 2, T2D or type 2 diabetes, but doesn't matter. When you have a problem with metabolism of glucose, it usually has to do with, uh, or it, it's, it's related to and associated with an insulin level that's super high and uh, insulin resistance from the cells. I'm going to explain that right now. So, uh, and the reason I'm talking about this is because I wanted to do a couple of videos on uh, longevity, because I really think I'm turning 50. Uh, I already turned 57. I hit 14,000 feet in Colorado when I turned 57. I'm going to turn 58 in this next um, next year, 2020. However, I really, I'm really dying to. Well, I shouldn't say dying. I'm really looking forward to living a long life, but that comes with a price because you have to pay it forward. I don't get to eat, or and I'm happy with it, but I don't eat other things that everybody else at Filipino parties eat. I don't uh, get a chance to relax at home because I'm always driven to exercise. I mean, I feel good with that, and I feel good with the way I eat. I really, uh, the other day, I hurt my back because somebody at Plant Fitness was just sitting on the benches. There's three, four people, and two of them were talking to each other, taking up two benches, and I'm sitting there. I only have 15 minutes. I got to go. But because of that, I went to go, instead of using the bench or the Smith machine, I went to use uh, just a, uh, dumbbells and a bench. I hurt my back, and I thought, oh, shoot. I was uh, limping in the clinic all day that day. And I thought, I'm going to be out for a couple days, because that's what I'm used to, especially with I don't want to flare up my fibromyalgia trigger. And I felt it coming. But the next day, tremendously, I hit all my usual remedies, uh, and the next day I was gone. And that is really unusual. And I attribute that to good health. Anyway, um, so I'm dialed in, no matter how I get there. I have other videos to explain how I've gotten there. But I think it uh, does have, or at least I should say, the things that I'm doing to stay healthy are also the things that I'm doing to avoid insulin resistance. So this is my dude. I'm going to step out of frame. But this is a person. And this person is just full of glucose. Glucose is your standard uh, fuel source for an average American. And the standard fuel source gives you a lot of glucose. I think we take too much glucose. We probably have too many calories. We probably have foods that are really high with glycemic index. Um, that means uh, they are processed usually. Uh, low glycemic means it takes a long time for the body to digest it. High glycemic is anything you eat goes straight into your bloodstream and raises the glucose level. And it, you, you would think, as glucose is a fuel but for most of us, you would think that having a fuel is good. When I was in track and field in uh, high school and college, I used to just take sugar, um, or sugar cubes, domino sugar cubes, eat them uh, while I was training, thinking that it was helping me. Yeah, you know, I'm high school, college. Uh, now I know better. And uh, that just probably gave me a little bit of glucose, but also gave me a whole bunch of of fructose, which is not good. But the idea was when I was in my uh, young brain, crank up the glucose so every muscle that I train will have its carbohydrate. And that's what I was thinking. I need, you know, because of all the testosterone I had back then, 
I think it would take you young guys, uh, you young people, because of your hormones, you are lucky because you'll probably turn any fuel source into fuel, good fuel. You can take crap and turn it into fuel. Uh, I'm 57 now, I, I don't have that luxury. If I eat crap, I feel like crap. So you probably are different. Anyway, I thought glucose, glucose, glucose. So train hard, run hard, glucose, glucose, glucose. The problem is the higher you, your glucose level goes in the blood, the higher your insulin level goes, and you become eventually, because the cells try to protect themselves, you become insulin resistant when there's just too much insulin around. And the only reason there's a lot of insulin is because you're having a lot of glucose. And the only reason you're having a lot of glucose is you're eating the wrong way. So, the idea is when you have a lot of glucose, the liver puts out a lot of glucose too as a reaction to... I explained it in my video that I did uh, last. You can't see that. But I'll put a link down below on insulin resistance. Um, check it out, please. Watch that first, maybe then watch this one. But when your body has a ton of glucose available, it also asks the pancreas, that's a little organ in the belly, to make a ton of insulin to put the glucose in because you need insulin to take glucose. It's a lock and key thing. And the only way you get glucose into cells is with insulin. And the higher your glucose, the higher your insulin, bottom line. And the higher the insulin, the longer the insulin's high, the more the cells in the periphery block it. It's, a, it's called downregulating it, because it, it's irritating. A lot of glucose is irritating to the blood vessels. It's a fuel source, but it's, it's very irritating, especially at super high concentrations. Uh, so, and insulin, too, is irritating. It's a hormone that's not supposed to be that high, but... In some of us, it's too high, like when I have some of my patients do fasting, glucose, and cholesterol in the morning, I'll also throw in an insulin nowadays in this last year, 2019, because I wasn't believing my hemoglobin A1Cs, that's the fancy glucose, they were all coming back normal for my overweight patients. I'm thinking, well, I have nothing to talk about. But then I started doing insulins after the work of Walter Longo. I watched this dude put out great information. I've adopted his five-day fast, and I'll talk about that in a second, but um, then I started doing insulin levels, and lo and behold, everybody that was uh, okay with their glucose, even the fancy three-month glucose called hemoglobin A1C, I'm getting insulin levels now, and insulin levels are out of the roof, so and I'm only doing that because we have a metric, and also doing that because you, if you're my patient, will have a, a launching pad to say, okay, now I got a problem. And it, I think when you see a problem, when you feel a problem, it becomes uh, easier, it resonates with you easier to make the change. Otherwise, if I tell you everything's good, I show your blood tests are looking good, and I say, I want you to lose 30 pounds. Is that going to happen? Probably not, because I said everything was good. So the, when we have insulin, God forbid, if you have it, don't worry, there's ways to bring it down. And I got my video on uh, YouTube. But uh, the, the ways to bring it down are to fast, like Walter Longo, or you just decrease the total amount of carbohydrates and or you decrease the total amount of calories or volume every day. I think we're just overeating, overstressed, underslept. Anyway, just with regards to metformin, if you have a bunch of glucose, you'll have a bunch of insulin. If you have a bunch of insulin, the cells in the periphery will not let the glucose in, will not let the insulin in, and you just have a whole bunch of insulin in the periphery and the liver will also make more glucose because uh, the cells can't get any fuel in. There's a whole bunch of glucose floating around but the cells are protecting themselves. They close the door because it's too irritating but then at the same time when they close the door there's no fuel. So the cells are choking themselves off but they're protecting themselves from this high concentration. So when the cells and the brain says, hey, there's no fuel, the door is closed, there's no fuel, although they don't know that there's a lot of glucose in the hallway, they're still locking the door, uh, the liver is told to make more glucose, and then you make more glucose, which is crazy. So that gives you this terrible downward spiral of, of becoming a diabetic. And until uh, This all happens until you get injectable insulin in, and then suddenly when you overcome the insulin resistance with a ton, a ton of insulin injectable through your skin, you'll be able to beat that. But I mean, in the end, you're gonna have more and more resistance, need more and more glu insulin, more and more resistance, more and more insulin. It's just, it doesn't work. 
you really have to lose weight. And then the more insulin you have, the more weight you gain. It's just crazy. So metformin works to, number one, open. This is the door. This is a peripheral cell. This is a bunch of glucose. Metformin works to open the door. And when the door is open in the cell, it forces the door to open instead of closing the door. And it lets all that glucose in the hallway into the cell. And suddenly, the cell has all this fuel. And now the cell is happy. The brain is happy because metformin's working. And metformin also shuts down the liver from making more glucose, which is really cool. So it works two ways. It decreases that squeeze that the liver has to make put glucose. It has stores, like a battery. And in an emergency, it lets go of a lot of glucose from its glycogen stores. Well, metformin tells the liver to stop doing that. <clears throat> metformin also tells the peripheral cells, open the door. So suddenly your glucose drops. The cells work better. The liver works better. And things are cool, right? You would think that's really nice and it would make sense but <clears throat> I would always work on nutrition first I mean that's what this book is about it's about essentially uh, how to go on a low glycemic index diet this is an old book old book of mine low glycemic index diet a little mention on fat I think uh, one way to get around that insulin resistance is becoming keto uh, 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 having a, a well formulated ketogenic diet but in most of my patients, I have not had anybody, except for a handful of people in a couple thousand patients, maintain a well-formulated ketogenic diet. I had one that was a holdout, <clears throat> but she gave, she caved. But she, she's still very healthy. But it, it, I think it's, oh, I also have a chef who's maintaining, Jose, he's doing great. Um, but uh, aside from those two, I have a handful. But I think the reason, I tried it myself too, well, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, some people call me vegan, uh, but it, it's hard uh, to get that much oil when you're a vegan. You, it's possible, but not with my IBS. So I gave that up. However, it's possible to bypass insulin resistance by doing that. But if you can't do that, if you can't fast, uh, like uh, Longo had. So Longo's information, I'm going to be doing this on November 23rd, 2019. I'll be announcing it on Facebook. So friend me on Facebook and you'll see what we go through. I have other people that are already ramping up. I'm also be going do, doing a hike with Eddie at Starved Rock too. So I'll be starved. I'll be starving at Starved Rock <laughs> because I'll be starting my five day fast. Anyway, that is so, well, I'm not insulin resistant. My fasting insulin levels are like three. So that's pretty good. I, I, when it gets north of 12, I think we have issues. Definitely in your 20s, we have insulin resistance. But anyway, the reason I'm saying all this is because metformin does work. It works nicely to uh, uh, do exactly what I told you. Uh, now, people don't like metformin, or metformin gets a bad rap because a lot of people have upset stomach with it, uh, gastric distress. And it's reasonable. That's why you really should build up uh, your level of metformin, 500 once a day for about two weeks, 500 twice a day for about two weeks, and you take it with food. And then you move up to a thousand once a day and or a thousand twice a day. You can go up to uh, you can go up to two four thousand, but the studies don't really set. I mean, I think most of the studies now are about uh, eight fifty twice a day, and I think that's good. But I would really slowly get into it because it does cause a little GI distress. My thinking with the GI distress is that it irritates uh, or. Uh, it it, it, it pre prevents you from absorbing uh, fat and glucose in the small intestine. And when uh, some of that's already blocked, and that's pretty cool, because if you can get to the source of the glucose before it even gets into the system, that's cool. But all that glucose, all that carbohydrate, might be going into the gut. And if it goes into the gut, it might feed that microbiome that you uh, have been holding. And <clears throat> if your microbiome is healthy, you feed it a little bit of glucose left over from your food, fine. Uh, here's a study that uh, I think you can see it. This, the light's not that great. But uh, it, it does say that the microbiome is responsible and responds to uh, metformin. So I, I think it, it's a, there's a positive. If you have the right uh, amount of bacteria and the right bacteria, you can actually have 
uh, weight loss just with uh, metformin and the right bacteria. If you have the wrong bacteria, you might want to preload with uh, prebiotics. You might want to preload with taking care of your leaky gut before you start the metformin, perhaps, uh, or, or preload with pre uh, uh, probiotics. Sorry. So you want to take care of leaky gut. You want to start using prebiotics. That's essentially slime, uh, slippery elm, marshmallow root, DGL, a lot of fiber. Um, yes, a lot of grains, uh, if you're not allergic or irritated from grains. And then you take probiotics, and then this accelerates the probiotics to work better. I really think probiotics will help the healing process. Because if you look at the gut, uh, there are um, more healing potential DNA in the gut than there are in your entire body. So if you treat the gut properly, cool. So metformin, already we see that it shapes the the microbiota of your gut. What else does metformin do? Well, it also works to reverse stem cells or, or turn on stem cells. So some of these uh, studies were good. Some of these studies were okay. Some of these studies were great. I'm gonna start throwing up a lot of them here. So hopefully you can see that. Uh, I can't put all these links there, but uh, that's for uh, CNS. There's also um, a ton of studies on tumors. So I'll explain that in a second, but here's one. That's an okay study. Here's another. That's an okay study. Uh, the first one was apoptosis in glioma cells. Oh, so I, I should explain this. Gliomas are those, uh, that's the, one of the nasty ones in the brain. Multi, um, multiforme, uh, glioblastoma multiforme. Nasty, I have uh, two patients with that and uh, they're battling, but um, it's a nasty thing. And, uh, but, I mean, in, in uh, the test tube, uh, metformin does something with that. And I'll explain why. So it also has a role in prostate cancer. So my patients that are on active surveillance might want to, I didn't realize this until, until I researched it, you might want to consider metformin, <laughs> especially if, you're, um, met, if you have a touch of metabolic syndrome or insulin resistance. Um, um, again, uh, this is just general cancer prevention. This one was an okay study as well. Uh, this is the, uh, again, cancer prevention, same thing, I believe, or at least uh, carbon copy. Uh, Non-small cell lung cancer. Some of these studies were okay. Some of these studies are very small. Again, non-small cell lung cancer. And uh, again, I just this is just tumors in mice. So uh, this was a pretty good one, although it's an animal study. So some people will say you can't extrapolate animal studies to humans, and that's difficult. But you know what? If that's all you have to go with, then just go with it. You can you can kind of extrapolate, uh, play around with it. At least we know that animals live longer. Then we'll test it out in humans. But I mean, if you have nothing to go by and you just use anecdote, well, my uh, Uncle Bob responded terribly, so I'm not going to let anybody else do it. Uh, you know, you need more than that. That's why you go to me. That's why I have to use NIH-based studies, and that's why I have to really learn how to read these things. So I learned to read these for you guys. And here's the thing that's a kicker. Oh, I also have, for patients that have uh, problems with fertility, males especially, on testosterone, the use of metformin actually improves sperm count in guys who have low sperm count, testicular atrophy, and testosterone deficiency. So uh, how does that happen? So uh, that's a small study as well, but uh, so uh, while we're getting to the guys, because I just wanted to mention it, there is the community of exercise guys is really up in arms really embracing metformin. So if you know anybody that's doing any endurance exercises, you'll probably hear about them playing around or asking for metformin. I think it's good, and I'll tell you why in a second. All these studies, uh, they're, again, some of them are okay. Uh, Short-term metformin and exercise uh, with insulin sensitivity, making people sensitive instead of resistant. Um, so there's just a bunch of small studies, and those are human, uh, saying that this stuff metformin does work to improve life. Now, certainly, I, I, the only reason I was bringing this up was because I wanted to talk about insulin resistance. So, those of you who are really apprehensive on using or starting metformin, if we are at wit's end and I don't want to go on to, and your hemoglobin A1C is climbing from 6 to 7 to 8, I don't want to use insulin just yet, 
really when you get to eight, you're supposed to be on two orals or an oral and an injectable, not insulin. We have a whole bunch of uh, other options, but metformin is so easy. There's no hypoglycemia, meaning that if you take metformin, you should not have any problems where you dive below the deck and you get hypoglycemic or low blood glucose, uh, sugar. People would know it as sugar, but it's low blood glucose. That metformin doesn't do that. The biggest problem with metformin is that it can, or there's uh, uh, episodes where it does do uh, give you lactic acidosis, but really, for the rare case of that and the beauty of all these studies saying it helps with insulin resistance, but it helps with cancer, it helps with athletes, athleticism, it helps with uh, uh, sperm counts. I, I don't think there's any downside to that. So here is why. And I'll try to do it in a simplified form so I don't get into the weeds with this. So this is a cell. This is a cell. This is a nucleus. That's where the cell keeps its DNA. Uh, hopefully with long telomere caps that gives longevity. But there's two ways for this cell to go. It's either going to go where, uh, I just say in the case of metformin. Metformin will stimulate AMPK. And again, I don't want to get into the weeds, but if this is a cell, cells have a half-life. They're going to die sooner or later because when they get senescent, they... They, they're supposed to die, and there's supposed to be a couple of signals in the nucleus to say, okay, apoptosis time, time to die, and then another cell will take its place. But in some cases, your cell can become, it can get past the signals, and it'll live long. mTOR lives. So when the cell makes a lot or stimulates this pathway to make mTOR, it's mammalian target of rapamycin, Rapamycin came from uh, the Easterly Islands, and it was uh, found in a plant, and it was found that the plant, if you took it, would give you longevity. And there is, ha there happens to be uh, a target that looks like that in the human body, in the in human genome, in the human cell, and if you stimulate it, it makes the cell live longer, and that's not necessarily good. If you have a cell that lives longer, you're going to have old nu an old nucleus, and, and, and when you have an old nucleus, you'll also have tendency to make more problems, more mistakes when you duplicate that nucleus. You know, it goes through binary fission and all that stuff. And that's when you have cancer cells that can blossom. This is senescent. Oh, I spelled that wrong. Senescent cells are cells that live long. Precancers. Think of it as precancers. So if all these cells kind of got um, a, a, a gold card and a pass to die instead of dying, they lived, you'll have a whole bunch of old cells, and the old cells have a higher chance for cancer. That's a Band-Aid. So you have a higher chance for cancer. What metformin does is it, it stimulates AMPK, and it blocks mTOR, so that you actually have cell death. Cell death not to all your cells, but cell death to those cells that are on the verge of dying anyway. But uh, again, sometimes if you have too much mTOR, you're going to have cells that live long. And that's the idea where in the cases that I brought up as far as cancer, especially like this one, the colorectal one, which is an okay study, it was found that it decreased the cancer, chances of colorectal cancer blossoming. And the only reason it did that is because it blocked mTOR. I mean, there's a couple other things too. And indirect uh, control of insulin is always great. Uh, again, check out my insulin resistance uh, video when you control insulin insulin through a series of chemical reactions in the cell stimulates and promotes this you don't want this you want new fresh cells which is what Walter Longo is trying to do or found out with cancer cells he found out just with fasting for five days that you can get rid of all these crappy cells the majority of the crappy cells get killed and there's just a whole bunch of new cells that get turned on. Those are, especially with muscle, I've, I've talked about this before, but I cannot believe, I've done, I'm gonna do five rounds of this already since the summer. My muscle responsiveness is unbelievable. And uh, I'm doing the same thing. I'm eating less food. I'm still sleeping well, I'm exercising. As little as I am exercising, I am getting swollen very quickly. Uh, so swollen meaning I'm getting pumped uh, for my baby boomers. And I, uh, that's, that's not supposed to happen. And I attribute it to this. And the only reason this fasting mimicking diet is working 
is because of the technique of killing off senescent cells, precancer cells, and all the crappy cells, and getting a fresh new bunch of cells. So if you can get a fresh new bunch of cells, you'll actually have what's called stem cells. Stem cells are baby cells that start to produce new cells. When you have new cells, they, the likelihood of new cells, brand new cells, becoming cancerous is, is off, is way in the distance because usually old cells have a higher ten tendency for cancer. So we're, 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 I don't want to get deviate too much from the idea of uh, glucose but, and insulin, but this is where I say that metformin is safe. So not only is it safe if you have the right gut microbiome, so please watch my videos on uh, probiotics, and if you've taken care of your leaky gut, so please watch my video on leaky gut, but if all that is cool and you can slowly get into the metformin dosing, slow and steady, even if you exercise. Again, my, not, it, well, I'm not going to get talk about that, but if you can slowly get into a good level, I'd say 1,700 to 2,000 is good. Uh, it's usually split, twice a day dosing. If you have uh, sensitivity to uh, a little bit of flatulence and or diarrhea or bloating, then an extended release can be given, but extended release is sometimes tough to get covered by insurance. If you can get by with a standard, just work your way forward. So I, I think it's always important to also do the right thing as far as eating, to also introduce some form of activity or exercise. And listen, you don't have to be a bodybuilder like me. You can just slowly get into it. If you're just walking, don't just walk. Do more than that. If you're, if you're eating what you think is... Uh, limited and healthy, don't just stop there. Get somebody's advice. Read more. I read a lot of books. I, I clear a book probably a weekend uh, or every two or three days, and that's worth working a 50 to 60 hour week and exercising and taking care of my kids. So I, I think that I can be your source if you want to just review. I can review all your stuff for you. Just you have to trust me, and uh, I can read all these studies. But um, so, bottom line is, I think it's safe. If you've done everything conservative that you can do, then I think it's worth it, especially if the hemoglobin A1C is climbing and the insulin level, is, the random insulin level in the morning is not changing. I think it's time to introduce something else. And I, I would rather have you come to me than go straight to an endocrinologist. I do not think the endocrinologist will, uh, I don't know. Uh, they will probably have this information, but because of the limited time for uh, uh, visits, in specialty offices, they're going to go straight to, let's go big way, let's do two medicines, uh, a bigonide, which is metformin, and then Victoza or Trulicity uh, twice, a, uh, twice a month or four times a month, and then if it doesn't work in three to six months, we're giving you insulin too. So I, I just think they don't have time to teach you exercise, to teach you nutrition, to teach you calming practice. You know, there's, uh, I, can, I can stay on a vegetarian diet, and I can stay with exercise, but I can guarantee you during the highest stress months of the year, which is usually January and uh, I forget what, January for sure, for me, uh, I will always have my numbers, inflammatory markers increase. I can stay steady, but my inflammatory markers always increase. My cholesterol increases. A vegetarian, vegan, my cholesterol increases. Why? Because of the stress. So you have to learn how to reduce stress. You have to learn how to really embrace sleep. Those of you who get by with four or five hours, that's cool, but you can do that when you're 20 because the hormones are so high. But if you're getting into your 30s, 40s, and 50s and you're obese, overweight, underslept, high stress, um, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't carry on the tradition of uh, not caring about your food and just eating whatever you can eat because you think you can get by. You're going to pay for it sometime. So uh, I would say... I'm feeling really good at 57. I'm hoping to get into my 60s and do even more without an injury. Knock on wood. But uh, without an injury, uh, the, the idea with longevity is to not live to 100 and, and, and be in a nursing home in the United States, but live to 100 and teach, take care of your great-great-grandkids, walk around, drive independently, have a memory, and be mobile. So if you can do that, engage the community, still problem solve, share your wisdom with the world or people who are willing to learn, I think that'd be great. And then, unfortunately, you die, but you die fast because of uh, some event. Now, the opposite is living in America where you're like 30 or 40 and you're not really living because you're, all you're doing is spending your time going to the doctor's office 
being on multiple medicines, and then you get side effects from medicines, and your primary care doctor sends you to another specialist because of the side effects, and he gives you more medicines, then you just have this accumulated, stacked uh, 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 um, you know, a bunch of medicines that are not getting you anywhere. And when, in all likelihood, you should have started with exercise, calming practice, good sleep, and a healthy nutrition practice. There is no one diet. Everybody, I always have to plan this out, integrated medicines like that. I got to extract information from you, see what works, see what didn't work, see what your tastes are, see what really resonates in your body, and then uh, put together an algorithm for you. It, there's not just one. It's not, I don't push vegetarianism or veganism to everybody. In fact, I don't do it at all. I'm embarrassed to sometimes say it to some of the people in the gym. I don't really talk to them, but because I know it's going to bring up animosity and say, oh, what? where do you get your protein from? And, and you know what? I just, I just, there's my protein right there. Uh, so uh, the idea is that you just have to live a healthy life and everybody's a little different. When you enter into the funnel of uh, getting healthy again, that's why I call it a funnel because once you start to get it, you will really get it and you'll accelerate your health and you'll start to feel really good. I, again, I feel spectacular at 57, knock on wood, uh, but I, it's taken me this long to get it and meeting all these big doctors, Andy Weil, Deepak Chopra, uh, David Simon, uh, Herb Benson at Harvard. I've met all these people because I've had the luxury to do it. I wanted to learn from my patients, but it's benefited me. So follow me and hopefully you'll uh, get some, uh, you'll also take advantage and you can spread the news when you get healthy. That's why I'm, I'm seeing that and a lot of my patients do that now. I'm getting to the point where patients are coming in. It's like, we got nothing to talk about. You're good. Your body mass index is good. You're not suffering anymore. You've, we've taken you off your medicines. Time to get out of here. Continue what you're doing. I'll see you in two years. But uh, bottom line is I think you'll be okay. Uh, so if you have apprehension, just try it. Do it slow. Don't just go into a massive dose. And then work your way up. And then once you get tolerant to that, or once you are tolerant and you're on, on 1,700 to 2,000, that's 850 to the 1,000 milligrams twice a day. Don't just sit there, enjoy it for a while, keep up with the gut microbiome, but then after about three months, when you think that the numbers are coming down, attack, attack and try to live a healthy life, rebuild, get some muscle going, try fasting with me. I'm doing this every month, or at least every season, but for sure every month at this point in time till I'm on cruise control. I, 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 my waistline is, sl my waistline since I started this thing I've dropped down below the deck. I, I wanted to hit 140, I'm below 140. But now I'm starting to build up, so my waistline is getting smaller. I'm starting to creep up above 140, but it's mostly because of muscle mass. And at 57, I will gladly welcome muscle mass. I think I would have welcomed that in my 40s, but I was drinking alcohol too much and drinking too much coffee back then. So, bottom line, give it a try. If you have any questions, scroll through all the videos down below and put the comments down there. And if you had a side effect, I have one patient who thinks that she had the development of neuropathy from the time that she was started on metformin, which I, I look at the data and there's a tiny possibility, but I just think there's something else there. Aside from that, uh, most people are just apprehensive because of what they hear on the internet. I've had one person that also had a little problem with her gut, so we're going to try something a little different. She's now tolerating it. So uh, I, there's ways to break into it. And if you get healthy enough, we'll stop the metformin. Who, who needs medicines? If you can do it on your own with food, exercise, healthy living, and healthy sleep, a loving family, I think, and uh, social belonging, well, you don't need medicines. I might have to take care of some deficiencies in Chicago, right? you know, vitamin D, magnesium, B12, iron, all that stuff. Oh, that's another thing. Metformin does lower your B12 levels, so anybody of my patients that's on metformin, you, you should really get your B12 level checked and get on B12. Uh, I'll have, <clears throat> I think I did a video on methylated B12. I'll put that down below too. I'm going to put all these links down below. So enjoy what you read. Put comments down below if you have any apprehensions. If you're exercising and you're one of the guys that's using metformin to get swollen, I think there's benefit to it. I, uh, I, I would say, be care uh, give me your comments, uh, let me know how you're feeling, let me know your progress, and I, can, uh, I think there's ways to exercise. So you do it properly, and you can cycle your weight resistance training to your cardiovascular so you can get the buildup without stimulating or shutting down mTOR too much. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you at the next um, minute clinic, but I'm going to put a dovetail to this because I'm going to talk about L-carnitine next. 
Thanks for watching.